Hello, everyone. Hello. How is everyone doing today? I hope you are having a fantastic Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are located. It is Tuesday night here in the Central Standard Time Zone in the United States, where I am from. So I will take a look here and see if you guys could just let me know that you can see me and you can hear me. That would be fantastic. Just let me know if you can see me and hear me and I will look at the chat and see who is here and do some greetings. So let's see, it looks like we have, who was, Anna, you are the first one to have arrived today. Thank you for coming. And Gertrudis, hello, great to see you. May, good morning to you, May. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thank you for coming to Learn English Live where we are going to have a lesson together. My name is Sherry. If you have not met me before, I am one of the teachers who provide live lessons on Learn English Live. We also have, of course, Robin Shaw, who provides lessons on Sundays. So let's see who else is here. Thank you, Layla, for letting me know you can see me and hear me. Hello, Layla. Thank you for getting up so early. I am doing well today. I had a fantastic day today. We did not have school because here in the United States it was election day. So we all were voting today. And so I was able to do some relaxing today. I watched um, a, a great uh, program on Netflix. It was a, a well done show. I enjoyed watching it. And Shakespeare, you're from Yemen. Hello, Dwi. Great to see you, Dwi. I see a lot of our WhatsApp group members here. Jose, good evening to Brazil. Brazil is on a similar um, time zone. They're in a similar time zone to myself. Brian, hello, hello again, good to see you. Raha, welcome to the live lesson. Vishuda, welcome, great to see you again. Samira, hello, Samira, that's a beautiful name. I enjoy that name, Samira. So let's see, um, my name is Teacher Sherry, and like I said earlier, I am one of the teachers here. I also have my own YouTube channel that is called Learn English with Sherry. If you have not already subscribed, please check it out and do so. I would greatly appreciate your support. And hello, Prashant, good morning. Good morning to you. And Natalie, hello, Natalie. Great to see you. So I'm joined in my classroom today with um, one of my dogs. This is Bitsy. She was my first Chihuahua, and um, she is the just. She's my favorite. We're not supposed to choose favorites when it comes to your students or your children or your pets, but she is my favorite pet. So. Um, Great to see all of you. Let's take a look here. We're gonna go ahead and get started shortly with the lesson, but please let me know, check in. Let me know that you're here and I hope you are all doing well. We had a great day of weather here as well. It was beautiful, sunny, warmer than usual weather. Last weekend, I was outside and I had four layers of clothing on. It was so cold and very windy. Jonathan, welcome Jonathan, great to see you. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to focus on pronunciation. I know many of you have really been working hard on your pronunciation skills. And today we're gonna to focus on the vowel sounds and to be more specific, we're gonna focus on the short vowel sounds. So let's go ahead and get started. There are 40 phonemes or sounds in English. 20 of these sounds are vowel sounds. Half, half of them are vowel sounds. Hello, let's see, Valib have, welcome. So what we need to think about is that many times students who come to me and want to have lessons will often want to practice pronunciation of the consonant sounds. 
And I understand that, especially if there are certain consonant sounds that are in English that are not present in your native language. But the vowel sounds, they don't get the love they deserve. They don't get the love or the attention. And just like a plant, they need love too. So we need to make sure that we practice pronouncing our vowel sounds as well as our consonant sounds. And that's what this lesson is all about. So let's take a look. I just mentioned how the vowel sounds are not addressed enough during pronunciation work. And the thing with vowels is that they are key to helping understand the meaning of the word. The vowel sounds are the meat of words. So vowels add the meaning to the words. If you change the vowel, you're going to completely change the word and often the meaning of the word. But if you change a consonant, oftentimes your listener can still understand what word you're trying to convey. So for example, I work with young children every day and one of the main things that I work with with these children is helping them be able to speak clearly. So we are working on pronunciation skills. And the thing is that they often will substitute a consonant sound for another consonant. So for example, the word cat, or as we have here, cat, young students will often substitute the T sound for this, the K. So it'll come out tat. But I'm listening and I understand they are saying tat, but they really mean cat. But if they were to change the vowel sound and instead of saying the short A, a, and they said the short E, e, and said tat, I wouldn't understand what tat meant. But tat, I could understand tat was cat. So that's an explanation for you of why the vowel sounds are so important to helping listeners understand our message. Hello, Michelle, great to see you, great to see you. So here is another example of the importance of vowel sounds. So we have two words. One is with the short A, bad. And then we also have the short E sound, bed. And I have, here, one of my props I use in my lessons. So, bed and bad. One sound, a vowel, can completely change the meaning of the word and make it difficult for your listener to understand your message. That is why we are going to focus on the short vowel sounds today. I've listed, um, actually, four of them here. I'm seeing that I missed the U, so let me see if I can fix this. I did not add the U sound, and we're going to talk about the U as well. I was watching a show when I was doing this, so maybe I wasn't focusing quite as much as I needed to. So we have the short A, A, like map. The short E, E, as in bed. The short I sound, I, as in tip. The short O sound as an ah, like cop, and the short U sound, uh. So let's see, you guys help me finish this slide. What word should we use as an example with the short U sound? We need to make it a short consonant vowel consonant word. Let's have you guys help me out here. Finish this slide for me. What should we use for an example word with the short U? I'll uh, kind of wait here for a moment and see what you guys say. I'm going to have a quick drink. Remember, if you have not subscribed to Learn English Live, please do so. Hit the bell so you get notifications when we go live. All right, James, that's a perfect word, cup. Okay, so put uh is a different sound than the uh. Uh is a different vowel sound. So we're going to work on cup, cup. Good. U, that is a long U vowel sound. U is a long vowel sound. We need the uh sound here. Cut. Um, Dwee, that, that's the ah, uh, so that's the short O. Our, 
hour is, we need the uh sound here, guys, uh. This is why we're working on this. Bus, great, those are all. So we have cup, cut, bus. Oh, okay, Michelle, yes, plumber, uh, plumber works. Hot is the ah, uh. that is that is not the uh, that's not the short U. Uncle, yes, uh, uncle, that is correct. So this is why I was saying that we don't give the love to our short vowel sounds that they deserve. It's easy to get confused with them. So that's why we are going to do this lesson. So let me switch here to our lesson. And so let's start with our short A vowel sound, ah. Here we go. And if we were to do sign language, this would be the A. Hut, lucky, good. Cut, butt, shut, yes, Prashant. Umbrella, you guys got it now. Upset, yes, don't be upset, Fushuda. Let's let's talk about the short A vowel sound. So here is a written description of how to pronounce the short A vowel sound, the ah sound. Now guys, if you are in public, I still want you to try. I know you might get embarrassed if you're sitting on the bus or on the train, but I want you to do these sounds with, with me. This is how you're going to improve your pronunciation. So let's practice. The front of your tongue is pushed forward and held lower in the mouth when forming the short A, the ah sound, than with any other vowel sound. So. This is why it's important for you to make sure you're really opening your mouth when you say ah. Look at how far my lower jaw goes down. Ah, ah. When you say it in isolation, you're really gonna exaggerate the uh, movement of your jaw, ah. So this vowel sound is produced in a much different way than all of the other vowel sounds. Like I said, our tongue is held lower in the mouth than any other vowel sound. So let's practice. Ah, ah. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's move on and talk about pronunciation tip two. The tip of the tongue will touch the inside of the bottom front teeth. So down here, ah, ah. If it doesn't touch, it moves towards the teeth. The body of your tongue is rounded slightly upward. Ah, you can feel the tongue tip going upward slightly. Like I mentioned, the jaw is lowered, the lips are held apart, and the entire middle part of your oral cavity is open, wide open. So this is a sound, ah. You're just basically opening your mouth and the air is coming out. Ah, with your tongue moving up just a little bit on the front. Okay, so let's talk about, you guys are giving me some great words. Yes, Michelle and Dwee, rat and hat are nice ah sounds. We're going to go through three words for each short vowel sound and we will have sentences for each one as well. So I'd like to give you target words that have the vowel sound in the initial position of the word if possible. Then we'll do a word in the medial or middle part of the word. And also then we will do a two syllable word. Anna, I thought you were here earlier, so I said hello. So let's practice the word add, okay? Add, say it now. Good. Now, let's try the sentence. I had to add more sugar. You can never have enough sugar, right? Sugar, sugar. One of my dog's names is Sugar. So she's looking at me right now like uh, she thinks that I'm calling her. Um, so I had to add more sugar. Okay, now you guys, you try the sentence. What would we add more sugar to? Maybe you want to add more sugar to your tea? Or maybe I needed to add more sugar to the cookie mixture I was making. <laughs> yes, Anna, I did see you sign in really early. 
Okay, let's continue. Remember, you need to practice pronouncing these words and sentences. And this is basically your, this is your lesson. So your ability to participate is going to help you improve. So let's talk about coffee. You add sugar to your coffee, Jonathan. I don't drink coffee. This is what I drink for my caffeine. It's soda and the total sugars, 46 grams of sugar. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of sugar that's in here. It's not good for you. Um, it is my vice. That's the one thing that I do that I, well, I probably eat too much too. I don't eat as healthy as I should. My hat is blue. Okay, so there's a good sentence. Robin gets mad. Our word is mad. Let's practice that again. Mad, ah, mad. Robin gets mad when you don't follow the rules. Yes, that is true. Mad. So let's practice. Robin gets mad when you don't follow the rules. What's something that makes you feel mad? Let me know in the chat. You can start with, I feel mad when, what makes you feel mad? Let's see, what makes me mad? Mm, I feel mad when people are unkind to one another. I feel mad when people are unkind. That makes me feel mad. So I'm gonna just look and see if anyone has anything that they wanna share with a sentence. <laughs> well, rules are important, especially when you have a group of people from all over the world where things can get misunderstood in translation. Okay, so Dwee, let's look at that sentence. I felt mad if someone, we need to change the tense of your verb. I felt mad if someone has cheated me, has cheated me or has cheated on me. Okay, great usage of the original sentence, Layla. I don't want Robin to get mad. I don't want Robin to get mad, so I will follow the rules. I feel mad when people are unkind to animals, Raha. I get mad when I see some new English words. <laughs> okay, Robert. I get mad when my daughter doesn't make her bed. I feel mad when I drop a dish. We need to have the article a. Uh. When I see people don't follow the laws, I get mad. Samira, I feel mad when I see selfish people. Great sentences, guys. Well done. Now, I want you to say these sentences that you're typing out loud as well when you are typing them. I feel mad when my daughter messes up with her toys. <laughs> okay, so we need to remove one word from that, Vashuda. You don't need to say messes up. You need to say, I feel mad when my daughter messes up her toys. Messes up her toys. I get mad if someone break, breaks his promise or break. I get mad if someone breaks his promise or promises. I feel mad if someone doesn't respect each other. Okay, so I feel, oh, I didn't see that, Vashuda, that you said I feed. I did not read that. Okay, so here is another word, and this is for you superhero fans out there. Um, there are a lot of people who will argue who is the best superhero, Batman versus Superman, um, and then they'll also Marvel versus DC. Um, but anyway, Batman, let's practice that, Batman. And our sentence, good. Okay, Anna, I see you guys making your corrections. Batman is the caped crusader. Ah. Batman is the caped crusader. That is a nickname for Batman, that he's the caped crusader. Prashant is a Spider-Man fan. Yeah, I do enjoy Spider-Man as well. I really, 
I don't know if I have a favorite superhero. If I did, I would probably have to go with, I really love the Wonder Woman series, movies that they've been coming out. I like those. Um, and I, when I was a kid, I enjoyed watching the Justice League on TV and they had a Wonder Woman. And I related to her because it was the only female superhero they had. Uh, Zelita, you're a fan of Batman? And Gertrudis, Batman is the best hero? Awesome. So make sure you're saying these sentence, sentences out loud. Batman is the caped crusader. Okay, before we move on to the short E vowel sound, I just need to remind you, I am also on Instagram, Learn English with Sherry. Many of you are on my Instagram as well. Thanks so much for your support. And I have my YouTube channel, Learn English with, with Sherry, which is down below. And then most recently, um, I am on TikTok and I just recently overnight I got I think I have up to 600 followers which is amazing because I just started it so that's been going really well um, let's see do we pronounce the T sound of the word Batman so <laughs> okay when um, when I say Batman the T, I'm moving right past the T and going to the M. Now you can say Batman, but when you are speaking in continuous speech, Batman, the T just is kind of your tongue pushes past because you're moving from the A ah to the M mm in Batman. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand. All right, so let's continue with the short E vowel sound. Okay, so our short E vowel sound is a more of a relaxed vowel sound. The middle of your tongue, the middle of your tongue rounds slightly upward. The sides of the tongue may lightly touch the bottom and top of your teeth on the sides here, okay? So, eh, eh. See if you can feel the sides of your tongue against your teeth. Eh, eh. You're right, Anna. Batman and bad man sound very similar. He's a bad man. I like Batman. You have to listen really closely to catch those. Uh, let's see, so the eh, the middle of the tongue is rounded slightly. The sides of your tongue will lightly touch the top and bottom side teeth and your lips and jaw are loose and relaxed. Eh, eh. It's always great to pronounce a sound several times in succession. So when I'm working with students, I'll often say eh, 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 just so you can get that, that feel of where things are. So here is our first egg. I have my egg here somewhere. I use all kinds of toys in my lessons. This is like just an example of some of my toys that I use. So egg, how do you take your eggs? People say, how do you take your coffee? How do you take your eggs? So practice that word, guys. I need to set this down. Egg, egg. Let me know, how do you take your eggs, guys? I, I prefer my eggs scrambled. So if anyone wants to make me some eggs, I prefer my eggs scrambled. My son does a great job making eggs. He is our resident chef here. He makes eggs almost daily here at our house. So let me know, how do you enjoy your eggs? Take another drink here while we'll wait a moment. This lesson may run a little late, we're not getting through things quite as quickly as I thought. Twisted eggs. Brian, you need to tell me, what are twisted eggs? Two half-boiled eggs for breakfast. Ah, Spanish omelet. Omelets are delicious. I have never made an omelet. I, I've tried, but I just can't quite get that technique down. But eggs are uh, a great, great source of protein. Unless you're 
allergic because a lot of people are allergic to eggs. Natalie, you just don't like, okay. And also if you are, you know, on specific diets, then you may not eat eggs. Scrambled eggs, so do we scrambled, S-C-R-A-M-B, scramble, L-E-D, scrambled eggs, adding cheese. Yes, my my kids really like to have cheese. <laughs> Michelle, my husband likes fried eggs. He will fry himself an egg. Ah, Salita had some eggs for breakfast. Scrambled, okay, twisted, I, I assumed that maybe that's what twisted meant. Okay, so let's move on to our next word, which is 10, 10. Now not tin, this can be difficult. Tin as in a metal, T-I-N, 10, eh, eh, 10, 10. Mm, okay, May. That's not a problem, Brian. 10, he had the strength of 10 men. So we have a few eh sounds here. Ank, strength of 10 men. 11, eh, eh, e, le, eh. Yes, 11, the second E is eh, bin. Scrambled, mm-hmm. He had the strength of 10 men. This is a saying that uh, is often used when someone is really strong. Um, so if there is an accident and something has fallen on a person, oftentimes a person will be able to lift something that is extremely heavy as if they have the strength of 10 men because the adrenaline is going and there's someone who is potentially in a very dangerous, life-threatening situation. So you'll say he had the strength of 10 men. So Prashant, I just answered that. I hope that that made sense to you. We do have several idioms in the lesson today. So you it's a, a two for one type of lesson. You get the pronunciation work and you'll learn some idioms as well. Eggs with mayonnaise is the way to go. Good afternoon. Hello. Okay, sounds good. Samira, he got 10 out of 11. Okay, so let's move on to eh, eh, fester, eh, fester. The wound began to fester, fester. Let's practice the sentence again. The wound began to fester, eh. Now, fester is a way to describe a wound that is, um, is not healing properly and it's infected. It's infected, fester. So you don't want your wound to fester, of course. Fester. Now, I want you to also to recognize the difference when we say the words in isolation by themselves, and then also when we say them in the sentence. So when it was asked about the word Batman um, and how we do not enunciate that T sound in the middle due to co-articulation of the different sounds and their influences on one another particularly when we are speaking in running conversation. A wound that is that you have an injury. An open wound is an injury. So you have a cut or a scrape on your body and you have a wound from that. It then began to fester, which means that it was um, infected. And so there is liquid coming out of your body and um, it's not a good situation. So faster versus fester. Yes, that is a great practice to fester, faster, faster, faster. Ah versus eh. And even better practice in my experience has been distinguishing between the eh and the i eh sound because they sound very similar even to a native ear. Ah is is quite different than eh versus i. Eh. Ah and eh I can are similar, but I feel the eh and the i eh are vowel sounds that more of my students seem to have difficulty with. 
Okay, so let's move on to the short I vowel sound. Now, if you would like, you can always give some other examples or sentences, but at the end, we do have some exercises as well. So the no, festering is not a good thing to have happen um, for surgery, yes. Um, short I vowel sound. So let's take a look at this. The pronunciation tips for the short I vowel sound, the I, I, the lips are relaxed and the middle and front area of your tongue is in a higher area of the mouth. I, I. So let's, let's just take a, a look at the difference between a, so let's all just say a ah, with me, a, ah. e, eh. i. So your tongue went from a low position in your mouth, a, ah, to a mid position, e, eh. and now with i, eh, your tongue is even higher in your mouth, i. Eh. Let's say it five times, i, eh, i, eh, i, eh, i, eh, i. Eh. Great, now let's practice some words. We have iguana, iguana, iguana. Does anyone have an iguana for a pet? Let me know in the chat if you have an iguana. The boy wanted a pet iguana, iguana, iguana. I would not want to have an iguana for a pet. I'm not a big fan of reptiles in general. I know a lot of people do enjoy having reptiles as pets and they like iguanas. Hello, Zaman, great to see you. Yes, so Dwee, do you have an iguana? Let me know if anyone has an iguana. I have a friend who used to have an iguana and she would have to buy crickets and they would come to her in the mail so she could feed them to the iguana. And they had to be alive. I, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I don't like reptiles. Maybe Jonathan has one. I don't want to have an iguana. Okay. Okay, reptile dwe has an E on the end. I don't like reptiles, reptiles, E-S. So now let's work on the I sound. Bit, bit, bit. Bit is the past tense form for to bite, bite, bit. And our sentence, the iguana bit me. The iguana bit me. Michelle likes lizards. Oh, Gertrudis, thank you for the movie recommendation. The iguana, or the iguana, bit me. The iguana bit me. The iguana bit me. Try it slowly first, and then try to speed up. The iguana bit me. I hope the iguana didn't bite you. There are some iguanas who have pretty nasty bites. Okay, I'll just pause a moment here. I'm gonna take another drink to see if anyone has any other questions or comments. <sighs> Bitsy is making me very relaxed right now because she is sleeping on my lap and she's snoring. <laughs> so um, having a sleeping pet on you can make you very relaxed. It makes your heart rate go down and it also makes me sleepy sometimes. Hello, Radha, hello. So I is the short vowel sound. I is the long vowel sound. And in today's lesson, we are just covering the short vowels. It would, I'm, going to do the long vowels next week. Ah, Zalita, it's your favorite. Yes, sit and bit are pronounced the same. No, Anna. E, beat, beat, and bit. The long E is in the word beat, B-E-A-T, like 
This music has a great beat. Okay. All right, so let's talk about cabin. Also, before we move on, I wanted to just say to all of you, don't be sorry when you have a question. There's nothing to be sorry about. That's why we're here. He fell in a pit. Yes, and pit is a word that has several definitions. A pit could be um, a big hole in the ground. We could also have the pit in a peach, a peach pit, which is the center stone that's in the pit. It's not really a stone, but I think it's the seed. So here's our next word for I. This is our two syllable example. Cabin, I, I, cabin, in, I, I. Okay, I'm listening because cabin, I, I. It can be pronounced cabin, in. It's very difficult because the I and the E are so close here. Cabin. But the word list did have this listed as the I. So we're going to leave it here. Cabin, in. So a cabin is a small home, usually small. There are some cabins that are quite large, but usually a smaller home. We went to the cabin for Christmas. We went to the cabin for Christmas. Cabins are often located in forest areas or near water. Let's see if anyone else has any suggestions here. Mm. So pronouncing iguana, whether we should concentrate on another vowel sound, which is two A's as well. Iguana, ah. So you're talking about focus, should concentrate on another vowel sound, the A's, ah, iguana, iguana. I'm not sure what your message question is there. Yes. Yes, Gertrudis, that is correct. Cabinet. Yes, that's a tough word, cabinet, because um, if you were to say each syllable, James, it's cabinet. But in running speech, it sounds more like cabinet. So the I often just gets pushed out, cabinet. We went to the cabin for Christmas. Okay, so I hope, I, I think I answered all those questions. Vishuddha, I'm not sure. We might have to uh, touch space later, but if you can come ask the question again, that would be great. Okay, so let's move on to the short O vowel sound. Okay, so the short O vowel sound. And we're going to have our pronunciation tip for the short O vowel sound. The vocal tract is very open for the production of the short O. The jaw is held more open and the back of the tongue is held lower than any other sound in the American English vowel sound pronunciation. Very open. Ah, so if you look at ah, ah is even further. Ah, 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 ah. Insurance. So insurance, the i sound, yes, is the very first letter. In, i, insurance. The tongue will touch the inside of the bottom teeth again, similar to the a so that the top of the tongue is nearly even with the top of the bottom teeth. Ah. Yeah, you can feel it. Touch. Ah. The lips are held open and kept rounded, relaxed. Ah. Right at Layla. What did I miss here? Okay, yes, I did address that. Thank you. Okay, so let's practice ah, 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 ah. Remember, you need to practice these out loud to help improve your pronunciation. Here we have the word odd. Odd. He was the odd man out. 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 This is a saying that means that someone 
got left out of an activity. So for example, let's say you had five, five guys and they were playing a game and four of them had paired up. So there are two and two and the fifth guy was the odd man out. Um, he didn't have a partner. It's also a way to just say that someone got left out of an activity. He was the odd man out. All right, so give me some examples of ah sounds here, guys, as we move on through this pronunciation exercise. We also have the word pod, pod. Let's practice pod. They were like two peas in a pod. They were like two peas in a pod. Co ah cooperation. Co ah. See, I have to really listen myself. I can't remember what another word has the same pronunciation of odd. Sod, mod, hot pot. Yes. Pot, yes, Prashant, God is definitely perfect. So does anyone know what the meaning of they were like two peas in a pod? What does that mean? Ostrich, great, Samira, yes. They were like two peas in a pod. What does that mean? Stop, yes, not, mm-hmm pot. Great. Okay, students. So let's see. Layla's not sure. Shot. That reminds me of one of my favorite songs, but I'm not going to sing it because we're not supposed to sing on YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus, you don't want to hear my singing. Lot. Mm -hmm. So the saying they were like two peas in a pod. Mansoor, nice to see you here. Not as correct, Oxford oxygen. Yes, Prashant. So two peas in a pod, that is like saying that people are very, very similar. They get along very well. They are so similar. They get along very well. So I would say my daughter Callie and her best friend Amber are like two peas in a pod. They are very close friends. They're not very similar in their personalities, but they're very close. So you could say it as if people are similar or if they are very close because two peas in a pod are close together. All right, so let's look at our next ah word, which is polish. Now, this could be pronounced Polish to talk about people who are from Poland, or I'm sorry, you would say Polak, but um, Polish people. Um, is a different way of pronouncing it. So, ah, polish is another way. Hmm. Samira, outstanding is not, that's the ow sound, ah. We're looking for the ah sound here. Polish, let's practice in the sentence. We need to polish the floors. My floors need polished really badly. Polish. We need to polish the floors. Ah. Police is actually the uh sound. That is the short U sound. Police is the short U. Portable. Mm. No. Ah. Ordable is the uh, or diphthong, which we're going to talk about in another lesson too. No, don't be sorry. Guys, don't be sorry. Possible, yes. Um, foolish is the oo, that's the long u sound. Police. Pol police. Okay, so ah, we're looking for the ah sound here, guys. So some other examples would be, now I have to like use my brain 
at 7.44 p.m. in the evening. So polish, abolish, um, demolish, ah, ah. Those would all end in the, the L-I-S-H sound as well. Um, any other ideas? Ah, uh, folly. This is a folly, meaning that it's um, a farce. You're, you're on a um, wild goose chase. You're doing something that is doesn't make sense. Folly. Owls. That's the owl sound. So those are, again, some, some the owl sound. A more. So ah, ah. So top, rot, cot. I like to polish my glass table. Falling. Ah, yes. Falling. Mm hmm. Demonstrate. Dim. Un. Mm -mm. No. Ah. You need the ah sound. Demonstrate. That has the eh, eh. That is the short e and the uh sound, the short u and the long a. Dominic. Yes, Vishuda. Dominic is correct. Ah. Bomb. Yes, Prashant. I know that this is challenging, guys. I understand that. That's why we're doing it. Robin, how could we forget? Yes, Samira. Ah, Robin. I don't know how I couldn't have used him as an example. Column, yes, James, column. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the short U vowel sound. The short U vowel sound, I do have actually on my TikTok, I did a TikTok on the short A vowel sound. And um, I had someone who commented that the schwa or the short U vowel sound is the most difficult for them. So I need to do a video on TikTok for that one as well. So here is the pronunciation tip. Yes, Anna, please do so. Mm -hmm. The body of the tongue is relaxed, somatic, ah, so, somatic, mm. and Lita, yes. Um, the body of the tongue is relaxed and set low in the mouth. And the sides of the tongue lightly touch your bottom teeth. The jaw is kept in a neutral position and the lips are relaxed. So remember we're doing the uh sound here so uh 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 body ah uh, yes that would be the last sound we were working on that's correct anna i'm sorry you were disconnected michelle so ah uh, body polish yes so let's talk about the short u vowel sound the jaw is kept in a neutral position and the lips are relaxed I have that twice. <laughs> okay, so let's try the uh sound in some words, students. You're doing great, guys. Hang in there. I know this takes a lot of concentration. Under, under, under. He received money under the table. So this is another idiom under the table. Uh, my meaning for this sentence was not that somebody is actually going to, let's see if I can show you. I think I have my table over here. Hmm, I don't. All right, so it's not that they're gonna actually get money under the table. <laughs> You're not handing them money under the table. To receive money under the table means that the person was paid money for a service that was just cash, and so there wasn't any way to trace it. This is done so that people don't have to pay taxes. Receive money under the table. So, umbrella, yes. Thunder, number, yes. Gertrudis, yes, it's illegal to receive money under the table. Uh, uh, he received money under the table. 
And I'm not talking about stressed versus unstressed in this lesson, we're just um, keeping it as basic as possible. So you want another of the uh, the short vowel? Yes, we are going to do many other words. So the short U vowel sound is used extremely often in the English language. Very, very common. Sun, money, uh, uh, money. It has the uh sound in it. Um, sun, fun, money, run. Um, beach bum, beach bum is a term that's used for someone who likes to hang out at the beach a lot, a beach bum. It doesn't mean they're actually a bum. It's just a saying that describes someone who enjoys staying at the beach. A runner, uh, yes, us, fun, gum. Those are all words that have the uh sound in them. Bunny, mm -hmm. I have a bunny right here too that I use in my lessons all the time. Bunny, bun, mm -hmm. I have a bun here too. Uh, but I had children here in my home today and they've moved my toys. So here is a bun. All right, plum. Yes, my son, Pasha, loves to eat plums. Um, so when they're in season, I will try to pick one up at the store for him when they are in season. Okay, so let's practice another word. We have cut, uh, cut, cut. Sun and sun, yes, those are great. That's a good, Good lesson. I'm also doing some homonyms and homophones on TikTok as well. Those have been pretty popular, and that would be a good example. Run, sun, none. Sunday, 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 Sunday. That's right. So cut, cut. The fighter had to cut weight. The fighter had to cut weight. The fighter had to cut weight. Samir, yes, but and shut. Cup, mm hmm great. So the fighter had to cut weight. That means that the fighter is going to have a bout, meaning that they're going to fight someone, and they have to be under a certain weight, depending on what weight division or weight class they are fighting in. So if they are 185 pounds and they're supposed to be fighting at 180 pounds they have to cut weight they have to lose the weight that is over 180 pounds monday yes monday is also the uh the short u vowel sound so here we have a, a word that i included because it has the short u it has the schwa sound and it is difficult because they're the A's, right? It has the A even though it's the uh. Thursday is not the uh. That's the er sound. Eh, er, diphthong. Button, yes, button. So, banana. Banana. The uh at the end of banana, the last A. Banana. Banana. So you have the first A is the uh, it's the stressed. Banana. 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 Right? Banana. So stress in the first. Uh, and then the last A is also a, a, a short U, but it is the unstressed. Banana. The banana wasn't right. Banana. It's not banana, banana. -na. I can't even say that. Ba, nan, 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 nan. It's, it's difficult, right? Banana. So, your favorite fruit is the banana. Excellent. So, do we ah? That's the short a sound. Bath is the short a sound. Flexible eh, eh, is the. That's also the short e. We're looking at the uh, math, ah. Those are, are the short short a sounds. Uh, the uh sound here is what we're looking for. Sudden, 
is another example of a word that has the short U vowel sound. Umbrella. The iguana is the short I, I, I. But, oh, yes, the last A in iguana is a short, a short U vowel sound, yes. The banana wasn't ripe. I prefer my bananas to be a little overripe. So I like for them to have a few brown specks on them. Not very brown, but a few brown specks. I, it, it, it just, the bananas are sweeter that way and I prefer to eat them like that. Okay, so students, pronunciation of vowel sounds in running speech can be challenging as we've seen during this lesson today. Most languages have fewer vowel sounds than English. And so for that reason, it can add another caveat. Yes, 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 Michelle. Mm -hmm. The unstressed syllable, schwa, the uh. Diphthongs add complexity to this, okay? And I just wanted to briefly touch on vowel diphthongs because those came up today, right? Vowel diphthongs are when two vowels are paired together and can make a different sound. So Riham, fun and fan. So that's a good example of the a uh versus the the a eh, the a ah sound. So here we have an example of a vowel diphthong. You put the o and the i together, and it makes the oi sound. It starts with o e oi sound. So oil, soil, foil. These are examples of vowel diphthongs. I just wanted to introduce that so that we can touch on that in a future lesson. So the o, o plus i makes the oi sound. And so, yes, this is part of why vowels can be complex to learn in the English language. All right, so we're gonna wrap up our lesson with a listening exercise. So what we're gonna do is I am going to say one of these words. Yes, Prashant. Coin, that's a good example of the oi sound. And yes, the, another diphthong, the E-A. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say a word and then you are going to listen and then you are going to give the letter of the answer in the chat. We will wrap things up with that, okay? You guys have been great hanging in there. Thanks so much. Here is the first word. Are you ready? Here we go. Bed. Bed. Place in the chat, A or B. Bed. Bed. I'll wait and see what the answers are here. A or B. Great. Good. You guys are hearing that correctly. Well done. The answer was B. Bed. I want to take a moment to pause and thank you to all of the supporters who are um, supporting this channel and also the um, VIP individuals who are supporting the channel. So Michelle and Gertrudis and Dwee and Anna, thank you so much for your support of the channel. Um, it means a lot. It allows Robin to continue to provide a lot of free opportunities. I guess you do pay a little bit to be here, but um, it just allows a lot of things to happen. And we are working on many more things um, in the coming months. Layla, thank you for your participation. So is the Pablo? Yes, it's B. B was the answer. It was bed, B-E-D. Thank you to all the students, all of you. So then we have our next exercise, which I'm going to say the word. I want you to listen closely and choose the answer and put it in the chat. Okay, so here we go. We have 
pin, pin, pin. Ooh, I've been sitting for a bit too long. A or B, pin. A or B? Mm hmm. Yes, that is correct. A. Uh, thank you, Vashuda. So, this is the actual area that I have received. I have my master's degree, and a lot of my training is on pronunciation. Manzoor, yes. Raham, mm hmm. Sahib Lu, good. Yes, pin. The answer was A, pin versus pan pan is b and we use a pan to cook food pin i have p i n pin this is spelled p e n pen pin is something that you would use to um, stick into like maybe clothing you could use like a safety pin that would be P-I-N. Okay, so here is our next exercise. We have A or B, please choose. And the word is sun, sun. Please post in the chat, A or B. Sun. I think this is my longest lesson ever. Thank you for hanging in there, students. Layla, pin and pin. Um, mo uh, many people pronounce those two words the same way, pin and pen. It's very, I say it the same way, pin and pin. Sun, A, 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 yes. Oh, you guys hit it out of the ballpark with this one. That is correct. I did say A, sun, versus B, sin, eh, eh, sin. The answer was A, sun. Okay, so now to address Layla, you let the cat out of the bag. So fill in the blank. I wrote with A, go ahead and answer in the chat, I wrote, wrote is the past tense verb for write, to write. I wrote with a, hmm. Ah, Michelle, thanks for that. I, I too felt the last exercise was pretty challenging as well. Yes. Now, if you wanted to be a tricky student, you could say, I wrote with a marker, <laughs> right? Because technically that would work. But I was looking for pen or pencil, either one. Yes. Great work, everyone. I wrote with a pen. So just as a reminder, the next lesson will be on the long vowel sounds. It will be structured just like today's lesson, but we will focus on the long vowel sounds. Okay, so I hope you guys can come back for that. It will be next week at this same time. And I wanted to just remind you, here are some examples of my social media. I am on Instagram, Learn English with Sherry. I have live videos on Instagram that I post. Um, I don't go live every day because I didn't go live today, but I do go live almost every day, very frequently. I will take you out when I'm doing things so you can get a feeling for our culture, what my life is like. And then also I will post uh, little lessons occasionally as well. And then I am on TikTok as well. I have my YouTube channel, which I have occasional lives on my YouTube channel as well. 
rehab. So pen, pen, pun. Pen, pen, pun. You're welcome, Prashant. Thanks so much. Try to go back to sleep, Layla. Uh, for those of you who are, it's very early in the morning. I appreciate that. For those of you who are staying up late, thank you so much. Reham, pan, pan is that pronunciation. Thanks, guys. I really am so thankful. I wanted to give you um, just this thanks. Uh, November is the month where, uh, at least in the United States, we celebrate Thanksgiving. And so it is the month of gratitude. And I posted on my Instagram today that I am very thankful for the opportunity to teach online to you, the students. So thank you for supporting us and I appreciate all of it. We'll see you again soon. You're welcome. Thanks again. Share the love. Let others know about the awesome things that Robin is doing here on this page. And if you want to share my information with them as well, have a great day. Take care of one another, work hard, be kind to yourself, be patient, and be kind to one another. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again another time.